I want to welcome you to Hawthorne University's Holistic Health and Nutrition webinar series and thank you for joining us as we welcome Katie Carter, a graduate from our flagship clinical nutrition consultant program, for her presentation on how passion becomes a unique cookbook, the challenges and joys of self-publishing. You know, Katie Carter, she loves to cook, so we got to watch out here because her enthusiasm and boundless energy for creating and sharing recipes is contagious. She's a certified as a nutrition consultant and yoga teacher, and Katie inspires us to eat healthy meals and keep our bodies strong and limber even while traveling. When not in her kitchen, she loves to garden, make art, teach nutrition and yoga classes, or explore the great outdoors with her husband, Bill. Her nutritional knowledge and passion for healthy living will ignite your camping and eating experience to another level. Katie lives on five, ac eight, five acres in Nevada City, California with her husband. You can find more about Katie from her website, katiecarterwellness.com. You know, as a certified yoga teacher and nutrition consultant and a lifelong camper, Katie felt confident to pursue her vision of a health camp cookbook that included yoga at the rest stop. Katie's presentation will describe her two and a half year journey of dreaming, writing, hiring a coach, deciding to self-publish, market, and sell her one-of-a-kind cookbook. Now she wants to inspire Hawthorne students and grads to incorporate their nutrition degrees and certification in not only their food and lifestyle choices, but also their hopes and dreams for their future. Katie lives in a small town and she decided to write the book she had been dreaming about. So in this presentation, she'll share all the obstacles and support and joys that she's experienced on the road to self-publish a very successful camping cookbook. All that said, we don't want you to miss anything. So this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay on our website in just a few days. We have a great deal of excellent content tonight, so I expect we'll go 60 minutes for the presentation followed by Q&A. So just write your questions or comments on the webinar question panel at any time. I'm your host, Paula Bartholomew. I'm a founder of Hawthorne, and I wanna give a big welcome to you, Katie Carter. Oh, thank you, Paula. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I feel so honored That's, um, and respected by you. That feels great. So yeah, thank well, you. I'm really, you bet. I'm so grateful to have you with us and pre presenting for us today. You know, Katie was one of our early graduates from Hawthorne, and I also had the pleasure of interviewing her for an All About Alumni segment back in 2016. So it's really very special to me to be able to feature you, Katie, on this platform today. And just, I just want to say, you know, I've been a witness to your accomplishments along the way, and certainly the joy of doing yoga together. It's a personal highlight to me that I'll never forget. Oh, so, thank you. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> I feel like y'all are going to really be pleased to learn from Katie, too. So. Oh, thank you. Thank well, you. Katie, when you're ready to begin, I'm going to turn it to you and mute myself. Okay, I'm ready. All right, go. Okay. Well, welcome Hawthorne students. Um, this is just such a treat to uh, be with you today. And um, before I actually really begin, I want to share with you one thing about writing a book. And um, I'm going to share many things about writing a book, writing a cookbook. But it, it's not an easy journey. And one thing that really, really helped me throughout this was my writing coach, when I first hired her, she said, this is not going to be easy. And it might, you think it's going to take six months, but it's going to maybe take two, three years. And it did take me two and a half years to do this. But she said, do you have a spirit guide? And I said, well, no, I, I don't. And she said, this would be something that it could be um, a totem animal. It could be God. It could be an angel. It could be an ancestor. Something that you feel is with you on this journey of writing and just going through the challenges of it. And so I chose an elk, um, the totem animal, the elk. And I looked up the meaning of elk medicine or the message from the elk. And it so resonated with me. It, and here's, here's what elk medicine means. It's, it's not necessary to be the first one to reach a goal. It's more essential to pace yourself, increase your stamina, and arrive without being burnt out when you arrive at your goal. And so whenever I had a challenge, I just brought in elk medicine to really help me through this So, um, and to pace myself. And then I invite the readers of my book to also bring elk medicine uh, on your journey of camping, of, of pacing yourself, of not being in a hurry. 
So um, I, I just wanted to share that right away that it's not an easy um, a journey to go on, but it certainly is fulfilling and, and it can be very fun. So with that, um, I want to uh, um, go on to the next slide and um, tell you what the webinar today is going to be about. The first part, I'm going to tell you how it all began with the writing and the drawing and the inspiration. Then part two is um, my hiring a writing coach and my decision to self-publish and then part three is going to be how I marketed my book and so how it all began it began camping because I was so inspired um, going camping and the great outdoors is really an inspiration to me in fact our friends call my husband Wild Ranger Bill because he he just loves to study um, study maps and he loves to study the history of places so he's um, he's really knowledgeable and just to show you a couple of the places that are very inspiring this is um, Granite Hot Springs in Wyoming this is another hot springs called Mystic Hot Springs in Monroe Utah there's my husband that's Wild Ranger Bill there and here is Mr. Grizzly on Vancouver Island so We've, we've really traveled mostly on the West Coast, the Western states. We've gone all the way to Cal, uh, Colorado, but um, mostly the Western states we've, we've um, stayed in. And then this summer we went to Canada. So um, just to give you a little idea about myself, I've been camping with my family um, since they, we were a young family. I had two, we had two small young boys and we had a classic VW pop-up camper van. Then we moved to the Ford Adventure Wagon, and it's a 1996, and you'll see that I love to draw the vehicles. I, whenever we're camping, I tend to slow down enough to bring out my, my journal or my sketchbook and start drawing in, in a little watercolors is what I use. And then this is uh, the camper that we use now. It's not that big. It's only 19 feet long, it's, but it is four-wheel drive. It's a custom built. So the uh, camper or the, the, the truck and the cab or the camper are all one. So you can walk from the front seats into the back and we sleep up above. And this camper has a really big refrigerator and it has a great cooking space. So it's almost, you know, it's bigger than, it's smaller than my kitchen at home, but um, it, it, it is enough space. And sometimes I'll cook outside and we do cook a lot on the campfire and we do, if it's real windy or raining, we might use a grill, but I have a little cook stove in here too. And um, this is just a, a shot of uh, our, our young family camping. And when the kids left for school, this, this is what happened. Our family camping trips turned into healing retreats. I say they morphed into these healing retreats. And here we are sunning ourselves in Death Valley um, and we're boondocking. And I do explain more about boondocking in the book, but just to tell you gently about boondocking, it's um, camping outside of regular campgrounds. So you're not in a campground and you can camp anywhere on BLM land or um, forest service land. Uh, in the west side of the country. I'm not sure about back east, what, what the rules are back there. But um, you just have to be two miles away from the main road. So um, uh, in, in Death Valley, anyways, in a national park. But in other places, you don't have to be that far from the road. Anyway, so here we are. And this is also when I realized that camping uh, became a healing retreat. And uh, this part, I'm going to tell you that I, I call it camping as mind-body medicine. And what happened to me was I used to own a yoga studio. I had a yoga studio for 20 years. I had two studios. I, I had 20 teachers that were teaching there. And I was teaching six classes a week. And I basically burned myself out. And I, I had a, basically adrenal fatigue. And my husband said, we're going to go on a long camping trip and you're going to uh, restore yourself. You're going to replenish and get healed. And, and by golly, that's what happened. So here I am. He took me to Death Valley again. We, Death Valley is just a wonderful place to go in the winter. So um, 
uh, we, here we are boondocking and I started doing yoga every morning and I started drawing and painting, which really kind of brought me back into the present moment. And I know that whenever I draw and paint that I have slowed down and I start to study my environment and I, you know, was really nourishing myself. I was creating uh, rock mandalas and uh, having fun with that and and then making healthy meals in the kitchen. And I, I just knew that this was a, a way for me to heal. The other side note I can tell you that maybe makes you chuckle, but my husband is very hard of hearing. He's been losing his hearing now as we're getting older. And so it's hard to talk a lot. He's It's easier for him. He just loves to, to photograph and he's he does his creative thing when we're on vacation and so what does Katie do? I, I got kind of bored and then that's when I started drawing and uh, writing and that's where my book started. I, I called my journal the Tiger Traveling Journal because we call our camper the Tiger and um, started this journal and um, I would write, I'd make something and I'd write down the recipe and then I'd do little drawings and the, the book just became really fun or the journal that I was writing just became real creative and fun and um, I, I couldn't wait to get back to it. And then here, here's a page from the journal. I called it the Camp Cook Sutras. I, I really thought I was so clever. This was in um, June 29th, 2010. And um, if any of you practice yoga, you might have heard of the book called the Yoga Sutras. And the Yoga Sutras is a text of the guidelines for how to be a good yogi. And so I did the Camp Cook Sutras or the Camp Cook Guidelines of how to be a good camp cook <laughs> and what to bring and what all, all the, um, the healthy food of what to bring. And so um, well, I'm just going to go back to that page. And so the sutras was a wonderful way for me to insert a lot of nutrition tips into my cookbook. All right, so I'll, I'll go on here. So this is part two of um, hiring the writing coach and my decision to self-publish. So, you know, here I was making this journal and um, I, I thought I got this idea, like, you know, maybe I could write a book or an e-book or it would be just for my clients. And I thought, well, I don't even know how to do that. I'm gonna hire a coach. So I hired a writing coach. And the first thing that she told me, I think I mentioned, I mean, I know I mentioned about the uh, spirit guide. She wanted me to choose a spirit guide. But she also said, get a three ring notebook and divide it into chapters and make out your table of contents of what you think your book's going to be about, of what the table of contents might be. So this table of contents that I'm showing you is a, an actual page from the book. And I have an introduction. I, I talk about how camping is mind-body medicine in chapter one. And that, again, was a way for me to insert so many things that I learned uh, at nutrition school at Hawthorne was, you know, um, Food is really just one piece of the pie, of the nourishment pie. And there's so many other things that nourish us. And I talk about that with camping. Um, and then the Camp Cook Sutras, again, guidelines for health. And then chapter three, the first chapter where I actually bring in recipes was I bring in secret sauces, dips, and salsas because I say, if you're going to do anything, any prep at home, make a secret sauce or one of these dips or salsas and or a marinade or something like that because those are kind of things that really spice up your meals really make them special and then here are uh, the other chapters so i ended up with 12 chapters and you know breakfast lunch dinner uh, foil packet recipes snacks desserts beverages natural first aid on the road another great place to insert a lot of nutrition stuff and then um, my, with essential oils, I like to use essential oils. And then chapter 12 is all about yoga, yoga at the rest stop. And I say, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, and I explain that in, a, in, a, in the book, in the chapter. So each chapter has a vignette. So along with creating recipes, this book is really 
I, I call it a tapestry because it's really a tapestry of my life. It's not a total autobiography, but I insert uh, these vignettes, little, not real long vignettes, but at the end of each chapter is a story. And the first vignette I write about is in the beginning, Katie meets Bill. Well, we meet camping. I'm 22 years old and he's 24. And we met, I came out to California because I'm from Wisconsin and I, I drove out to California. And anyways, this is the story. You're going to have to buy my book to, to actually read it, but um, of how we met when we're camping. But I've had people who have bought the book and said, oh, yeah. Um, I said, have you made any of the recipes? They go, oh, well, I haven't made the recipes yet, but I've read every vignette. I went through every chapter and read every vignette. Now I know you so well, Katie. <laughs> I know what you do on the road. I know, you know, when you had to melt down, I know all about these things. So. Um, that's another fun part of the book is, is the vignettes. And then here's chapter two. This is each chapter has uh, a title page that I put a lot of energy into the artwork. I had a lot of fun with this. And this is the uh, chapter on the Camp Cook Sutras. And uh, you can just tell I was able to say how to stock the basics with protein, fats, carbohydrates, condiments, and beverages. These are things I recommend bringing. Um, different kitchen tools, um, and then I have inflammatory foods to avoid or decrease. I give a science lesson in gluten sensitivity, and then I have a vignette of my personal health story. And um, the, the book is gluten-free. I don't put that on the cover. I didn't want to like boast about that. I think there's so many people now that are gluten-free, or if they're not, it's no big deal. If the book is gluten-free, if they don't want to use uh, what I use, they can use regular uh, pasta or, um, you know, I, I say my husband's not gluten free and every once in a while we'll stop at a bakery and he'll get what he wants. But otherwise, he just loves the way I cook. So he's he's spoiled. You know? <laughs> All right. So there's uh, the Camp Cook Sutras. And then here's another title page of lunch at the rest stop. Um, and I have lots of recipes there. And you can just see how much fun I had making the title pages. A friend of mine said, each title page um, you've spent so much time on, you ought to take out the table of contents and put a quote, because I do have a lot of quotes in the book as well, um, and make them into cards. So that's like in the future, or I may end up doing that at some point. But I have drawings, and then I have photographs. And, um, uh, you know, I write a little little sentence or two or a paragraph at the top of each recipe just to kind of bring in my my own voice again um, and then uh, this is just a sample of the pages um, these are foil packet recipes and I do want to share with uh, Hawthorne students that we all know about the toxicity of aluminum foil so uh, I, I tell them to put um, parchment paper and then wrap it with aluminum foil and I, we actually do a lot of foil packet um, baking. It's just a, a nice way to uh, cook vegetables and even meats, uh, fruits. I do a lot of apples and maybe an apple dessert in a foil packet recipe. So um, uh, I, I really wanted to talk about that because it's easy, it's fun. And um, we usually, when we camp, my husband loves to make a campfire. So if, if, it's, if it's allowed, we always make a campfire. And then in my sketchbook, I just did a lot of drawings again. So here you, here you see it, um, a bunch of my drawings. And I, my idea here was thinking um, these would be like at the bottom of the page or um, I could cut them out and put them throughout the book. So um, I, I just had fun doing that. Here's this page is um, the one on the left is just some drawings I did in my sketchbook. And this is how the graphic designer put it in the page. So she made beautiful borders, beautiful color borders, uh, which I just loved. And um, she inserted my artwork into it. So that was just uh, really fun to see um, what she did with my art. But I sat next to her a lot while we, well, she put did the artwork because I wanted to be part of that too. And then I was able to this, I'm showing you this page just to show you that I would put a little nutrition tip in here and there. Not every recipe has a nutrition tip, but um, bring a little bit of science in and tell them why 
um, cocoa, uh, unsweetened cocoa powder is so good for them and, you know, all the, all the benefits of eating healthy. This is another um, title page. This is the first aid. And you can see what I brought in, hangover helpers. So I was able to actually bring in lots of nutrition tips in here and some yoga poses that were good for hangovers, um, apple cider vinegar, all the benefits. And that's an easy thing to take. I use it, uh, I, I rub it on, I'm, you know, I will dilute it a little bit and I rub it on if I get poison oak or a bug bite, it helps stop the itching. And I, you know, talk a lot about the benefits of the vinegar. I talk about constipation. A lot of people get constipated when they travel or go camping because the bathrooms are sometimes unusual. And so we talk about constipation, talk about snake bites, insect bites, and essential oils. So um, <clears throat> it was fun to bring in all my nutrition wisdom into this too. And then here's the title page for yoga at the rest stop. And um, I did a, another certification from Deanna Minnick called Food and Spirit. I'm a certified food and spirit practitioner. And she really brings in the whole concept, and she doesn't use the word chakra anymore, but uh, these symbols around the um, border are the, the symbols of the seven chakras. So she has these seven systems of health. She pretty much follows more the endocrine system. But um, uh, I was so turned on by her course. I highly recommend it. I know Paula took it. And we've shared a lot about that, but uh, Deanna Minnick is just a gem. And I know she's done some webinars for you guys for uh, Hawthorne, so I hope that you've, you've been able to hear her speak. She's, she's incredible. But this really, uh, when I took her Food and Spirit course, it pulled my whole um, nutrition and yoga uh, all together and then um, my artwork, the creative expression. So she really talks about, you know, um, the pie of the nourishment pie. <laughs> okay. And then here are some of the yoga pages pages because people go, how did you do put yoga in it? And um, I just did um, I do a lot of yoga on the uh, picnic table and use that. And uh, what, what's fun for me was um, while I was writing this book, I was still teaching yoga. I've, I've retired from that now, but I was teaching yoga and I, I just did a lot of chair yoga with my students. We, I had like a more of a senior class of students. And I said, this is like doing yoga at the rest stop on the chair. So, you know, it'd be like on the picnic bench. So we would do that. So that's how I put the yoga in there. And, and there's quite a bit of yoga uh, pages in there. But I recommend when you stop at the rest stop, just do three, three poses. Don't have to do them all. Just do one or two or three. And then I, throughout the book, in each chapter, I do have one picture of me doing yoga in, at the campground or in some beautiful environment just to show, a, you know, kind of weave yoga into the whole picture. Okay. And then finally, when I finished the book, okay, so I got the book all finished. I had the indexer do, you, you can't do indexing until the book is finished. And I did, had the indexer come in. And um, I decided, you know, I was ready to publish or, you know, get the book printed. And my writing coach was, was wonderful. She really was my cheerleader. And she just thought my idea, the title of the book, the artwork, everything about it was so clever and so great. She said, I think you should um, go for an agent and a publisher. I think you could get one. And um, I'm going to walk you through those steps. So that was really great for my ego. But um, when I found out what I, you know, needed to do for this, this was very difficult, and I did most of it. So, um, to find an agent, um, I'm going to just talk to you. I don't know if you know much about uh, publishing versus finding a publisher and an agent, and versus self-publishing. So, what you do is you're looking for an agent, and I, I would start looking for an agent who um, found uh, publishers for cookbooks for nature, for yoga, those were the things I was looking for. So, and that I would did online. I would look through different, um, you know, book reviews and see who reviewed them, who were the, uh, who was the agent. Um, 
and try to you know work my way through that and in order to get an agent you have to send them a proposal so you have to do a proposal for um, about your book for the agent and you can find all of this information online about how to write a book proposal if you're looking for an agent and a publisher so I did all that I wrote a 25 page book proposal it's got pictures of pages from the book but it's also it they really want to know <laughs> because if you find a publisher you find an agent who finds you a publisher the publisher will do all the graphic work for you so I would just send them the writing and the, the photographs and the and the artwork and they would put it all together and um, they would pay for the printing and basically, if they liked my book uh, a lot, or they thought it would be really successful, they give you a stipend. Um, because I'm a nobody, and um, I've never written a book before, and um, the book world doesn't know me, they might give me a stipend of $500. But that's actually pretty good, because when you end up self-publishing, you put out a lot of money. But what I realized was um, the publisher will do that for you, but as far as marketing, they still want you to help market the book. And so they want to, they, they, they uh, uh, suggest that you have 2,500 on your uh, mailing list uh, for your, your followers on your email um, or your blog or whatever you write. And then that you also have 25 followers on Facebook or uh, Instagram. Um, and I didn't have that. I have about 850 followers on my uh, blog list, my mailing list, and then I have uh, 1,100 friends on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. Um, and the other thing is um, the publisher uh, might set up a book signing for you in Chicago or in Florida or whatever, but you have to be willing to travel and pay uh, your own expenses and you know go to book signings and pay for the hotel and the travel expenses. And um, it's like, I, uh, you know, I, I, that was a lot for me to think about. So um, I just said, no, I, I think I'm gonna self publish. So um, yeah, and here's where I say the number three is receive the stipend, okay. So that is more about, you know, agent, publisher versus self-publishing and here's self-publishing. So what I decided to self-publish, I, I interviewed um, two graphic artists and I really, I, I liked them both, but one I really resonated with and she showed me some of the books that she had put, she was definitely a, um, a book person um, and her, her, um, uh, her website is in the book. It's called uh, From Self to Shelf Publishing and she charged me $1,600. She gave me a quote for about 1,000 in the beginning, but then it, it took longer and it ended up being $1,600, which is a pretty good deal still. I purchased an ISBN number and barcode, and that's the code on the back of the book. It's a international standard book number to identify your book, and it's a unique number. So that was about 100, that was $150. Um, also, if you if you did find a publisher, the publisher pays for that as well. Um, and then let's see, number three, I would have to I had to find my own printer, or I could um, use KDP Amazon Print on Demand, uh, which I had this connection with this guy that uh, said he could find me a really good printer, and I took a risk, and and in fact, it was a great printer. And it was in Chicago, and um, it, it's called TPS Printing. Um, they, you have, to, I, I had to do 500 copies um, minimum, and if I did more, I might even get a better deal. So I did 500 copies for my first run, and that was $5,500. So that's a pretty. I got each book for, you know, um, it was. Uh, it was about. It ended up be about $12 a book. It cost me. Um, and then I have not done aud the Audible book or a Kindle book. Um, I may decide to that decide to do that. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that when um, I get to more of the end about what my my new plan my next plan is. Um, <clears throat> and then the marketing, then self publishing, you have to do all your own marketing. 
And I, not, I wasn't afraid of that. That's one of my strengths is marketing. Uh, with the yoga studio, I got a lot of marketing um, experience and also having my own nutrition business. Um, I did a lot of marketing. So uh, especially in the beginning, the first couple of years, I did a lot of marketing. So I, I felt very comfortable about that. Okay, so now part three, and um, I, I answer more of your questions on publishing and self-publishing and all of that, so write those in if you have more, if I didn't cover everything you wanted to know. So marketing, again, I, this is my strength. Um, I, uh, we had a picture taken of me, uh, and this picture on the left is the ad that I put in the union, uh, our local newspaper. And that ad was $180, and a lot of people told me that they saw the ad, and it was basically the ad just to invite people to come to my book launch. So my book launch <clears throat> was at a very interesting place. Um, I had it at, we have a new campground in town. It's called the In Town Campground, and they have a big amphitheater. And it was uh, it just new, newly opened about a year and a half ago. And it's, there's a lot of glamp, glamping, camping there. They did have RV sites. They have tent sites. They have trailers to rent. They had cabins to rent. And they had a big amphitheater. So uh, I went and asked them if I could do my, uh, my presentation there. And they were thrilled. And I said, what, what do you charge? Oh, we won't charge you a thing, they said, because we want to get more publicity. We, we want more people to come here and see this place. And I, they knew they knew that I, I'm a, I'm a little rock star in my small town. So I've been here for 44 years, and I know a lot of people. And so they said, "Oh, we know you're going to bring a lot of people to this uh, to our amphitheater. So we're not going to charge you." So that was really nice. Um, and then the morning of the book launch, I did a 20 minute interview on our local radio station, which was supposed to be a five minute interview. Oops, but the um, but the guy that um, interviewed me uh, just was so fascinated by the book, and he was looking. He he took it home the weekend before the interview, and he just said, "I just love it. I got so many questions for you." So that was really um, a great deal, and a lot of people said they heard the interview and they came to the book launch just because they heard the interview. And then on the right here is the uh, the ad that was in the paper. Um, or not the ad, the article. It was an article in the paper, and I went to our, our local paper, and I brought the book, and they said, oh, yeah, this is great. They love that your local papers love to do stuff like this. So they wrote up the um, article about the new cookbook geared to make happy campers. So <laughs> that, was, that was fun. And then here is the, the amphitheater at the campground. And... Uh, it actually just spread out. There was people in the back because the food was all in the back and they were all kind of just hanging around. Just uh, And I had wine, so they were drinking wine and kombucha punch and all sorts of healthy stuff. So that was fun. I had a PowerPoint, did a PowerPoint there. And then here's the food. So uh, my daughter-in-law, um, who is an incredible cook, she did all th this food and we made uh, all the dips uh, in there are from in the recipe in the book. Um, the frittata over here on the right, that, those are that's a frittata. That's a recipes in the book. And there was some of Katie's cookies that's in the book. Somebody made those for me. But all this was all made by my friends and family did all this for me. So I, I really got a lot of help. It was really, really fun, really neat. And, um, you know, I, I might interject this right here because a lot of people um, would ask me or I, like they would do a lot of things for me. And I wanted to give everyone a book. And I did give out a lot of gift books, but a lot of people really wanted to support me and, and, and pay for this art, piece of artwork that I did. And so they, they, I'd say, oh, no, I want to give you a book. They go, no, I insist. I want to buy it. So I go, okay, okay, great. So that was, that was nice. And then this is probably one of the happiest moments. I'll tell you, when, you, when I was finished with the, uh, my talk, my presentation, and I was signing the books, and people were lined up. It was just so exciting. And here they're buying three and four copies because this was in September, and they're buying um, books for Christmas presents. 
And I was a little disappointed because I was hoping the book would come out at the beginning of camping season, which would be in the summer, like May, June. But uh, the book didn't come out till September. But then it was like, oh, Christmas presents. And then, again, I had a, um, a bookmark made for to insert inside the book. And uh, I, I know this, a lot, a lot of people don't get, get this made for free, but I knew the person at the printer, and she said, I want to do this for you. This is so cool. So, of course, I gave her a book. So she got a book. But it was really fun to be able to insert a bookmark, and that's kind of what at, they do at books, book signings now. So I hope you all can get a nice bookmark in there. And then the other thing that was really uh, wonderful for me was to have my family there. So my husband and then my son and his wife and, uh, and their daughter was running around, but uh, they were there and that just felt so wonderful to be held and supported by them. And then right after the book launch, um, I put it in a bunch of stores in Nevada City and Grass Valley. And uh, I, let's see, I have local sales. We're at two bookstores, one outdoor recreation store, two gift shops, and one fitness studio. So this is, she, she puts it in the window of her, of her gift shop and sent me a picture of it. So I thought this was really cute, what she put together with the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the tea towels and the camping stuff. It was, it was cute, cute window. And this store has sold probably probably four dozen books or maybe more. Yeah, it was, it was just great. They kept calling me and wanting more. And then I did, a, 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 I'm trying to tell you a lot of the expenses I had. So I did a website update. I wanted to put the book on my website and I don't know how to make those updates on my website. So I hired my web designer and she just charged me $75 and uh, put it on there. And I made a page for the um, that they could order the book and uh, and then it's on my website and there's a, there's um, my website so now well I'll, I'll tell you yeah you can go to my website and you can order the book but you're actually ordering it through Amazon now because the book is on Amazon I also sent copies of the book to the National Park headquarters book buyer um, I have I, I followed up with that one but he kind of didn't even answer my email, so I've kind of given up on him. I took it to a couple RV and camper manufacturers and sales. I'm still kind of nudging them, especially Tiger, where we bought our Tiger from, and there's a picture of the Tiger on the cover. And I said, I wrote, and I said, wouldn't this be a cool thing to just come along when everybody buys a Tiger? Couldn't they have this book inside? Wouldn't that be just a great add-on? But I don't know. They didn't go for that one. Um, and then I sent them also copies of the book, the actual book, to other bookstores in Northern California. And I sent it to a lot of outdoor stores. So uh, REI, it's, um, I think that's nationwide, REI, and Camping World and Bass Outdoor Stores. So um, I did hear back from REI right in the beginning. And they said, tell us why you think your book should be in REI. So I wrote a little essay and telling them that it was the perfect fit. <laughs> but then I didn't hear back from them. And I kept writing them and writing them and I didn't hear anything. So I kind of let go of that. And then um, this was uh, in September was the book launch. And so I um, announced on my Facebook page that I would be at the Nevada City Farmers Market for the next couple of Saturdays selling my book. And I said, um, I'll be signing my new cookbook at the market. Stop by and say hi. So I did it. I did the market for five weeks. And it was $35 a week to, um, I borrowed an easy up from somebody. And I put together a little booth. And here's my booth. Um, I, I bought um, these banners. And again, see, I brought the book in. And the guy that makes these banners is a camper. He has his camper out in front of his his uh, his print shop. And I showed him this, and he thought it was just great. So he made, uh, I paid $75. No, yeah, $75 for that big banner in the back. And he gave me the one in the front for free, and or for a trade of a book. So I gave him a book. And uh, so there I am. And I, it's, it was freezing in the morning. It was so cold in the morning uh, when I got there. But 
um, by about 10 o'clock it warmed up and uh, I at each um, farmers market for four weeks I sold between 20 and 25 books each time and um, then the last the fifth week I sold three books so then I knew that I'd saturated the market and I thought okay I'm, I'm not going to do the market anymore um, which was a good decision I was getting low on books remember I only had 500 this was uh, my writing coach so she came this is Molly Fisk and she is was our poet laureate in our town and uh, she's a coach and very well respected written a lot of books and she wrote a, a testimony uh, on my Facebook page uh, so glad to have helped Katie get started on this project and de delighted to see the finished project if you camp you need this book nourishing meals on camper wheels so that was just really a nice plug-in and the market was really fun I'm I'm social so I really uh, had fun being at the market you might be at wondering what these little um, little panels of artwork are up here and I um, I'm involved in the art community so uh, I, I had finished writing the book and I kind of got involved in this fundraiser that we did for uh, the children at the border and we said we made flags of hope and if people would buy a couple of those panels we'd hang them on a string like a prayer flag and um, we sold them all it was it was really great so um, that was a, a great project and then we we sent about I think it was four thousand dollars down to the uh, legal defense of the, Im the ch immigrant children at the border so that was one thing we could do to help and then here at the farmers market the I said these three guys are local musicians and they're pretty well-known musicians so I took their picture they bought the book their campers and I posted that on Facebook and oh, I got all these you know likes on that so that was kind of kind of fun <laughs> good marketing technique there and then finally um, on December 1st so the book came out on um, September 23rd that was my launch and um, I posted I, I pretty much sold out um, I have in my home I have about eight books left right now and I'm thinking about um, doing another run but I haven't done that yet um, so I posted it on Amazon and I used KDP publishing so it's print on demand one thing I will tell you if you do order the book from Amazon um, it's a good book it's a, a pretty good print it's not the same quality as the ones that I got from the printer the printer um, that I used TPS printing was just really brilliant colors Amazon is is good it's clear the photographs are clear everything's clear it's just a little bit dulled um, and if you haven't seen the my the original you won't even know I think you'll still be a, a happy camper <laughs> but it's it, it is not quite uh, the color uh, is not quite the same I also posted it on Ingram spark um, and that's a wholesale book distributor so they are also print on demand for bookstores and our local bookstores I told them I said I don't have any more books right now you're gonna to have to order it from Ingram and, and the one owner said to me uh, um, Ingram is not that great um, but um, we, we'll do that if, if you know when we run out so um, that's just another place for people to order the bookstores to order uh, large quantities and now I'm at a crossroads because you heard me mention that I uh, I'm out of books um, and I you know I saved a couple for myself but um, I, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to print another 500 or I haven't heard back from any big bookstores or anything yet so um, I wasn't you know I was kind of at this crossroads and then I, believe it or not the day before Christmas I got an email from REI it just blew me away and it said oh hi you've been uh, contacting the wrong person we really like your book it's really fun we'd like you to to submit it through the um, for as a first book as a first book publisher or as a first book author I mean and um, you know to go through the steps so that's where I'm at right now I'm just I, I, I went through that 
step uh, and I presented it to them and it and they wrote and they said it might take a couple of weeks and then actually they did say that it um, they were closed over the Christmas holidays and they wouldn't start work again until Jan yesterday January 6th so you know I had almost two weeks there um, just kind of being excited <laughs> or in the uncertain place so that's where I'm at right now so uh, I may be printing another one. It may be at REI. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll certainly let Paula know what the outcome is for that. And then when I was showing showing my um, uh, presentation at the book launch, I, this was the last slide that I showed, and I said, this is what makes it all worthwhile. Because the, one of the reasons I wrote this book was to leave um, a legend for my family um, for my students, for my clients, of the wisdom that I had um, accumulated from all the healing arts and all the practices that I've done and the schooling, and just pass it on and share this experience. Uh, so that, that felt really good to pass it on, to know that I'm passing it on to my um, family and um, friends and students and clients. And <clears throat> here's my website, katiecarterwellness.com. You can read more about me and um, eat slowly, deliberately, and thankfully. And now I'm ready for some Q and A, and I'll go. I can go back over stuff if you know if you have some questions. All right. So there's a couple. Thank you, Katie, so much. There's a there's right. a few people that are new here, and if you have a question, you need to write it into the question panel on your webinar um, control panel, and I'll see it, and then I'll be able to ask Katie. But if you just have your hands up, I know you have a question, but I don't know what it is. I can't help you till you do. All right, Katie. Gosh, what hey, a story. Did... You know, really. What a sweet, sweet story, and I just have to really say what a pleasure it was, the pace. You emulated the pace that you reflected <laughs> to us in the beginning of the benefits of camping, oh, uh, body-mind wow. medicine, and dropping into a pace where you can be creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. look what happened, really, look what happened here. Oh, and you know, Polly, because because you took food and spirit with Deanna. I mean, you know how she talks so much about that second um, uh, energy center, the 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 flow of getting your creative juices going and your playfulness and all of that. And yeah, uh, that really came out for me. And I, you know, it's just when I took her course, then it was like, oh my God, bingo! You know, that's just what's happening here. Well, it's a beautiful outcome. Um, I'm very really hopeful for you for REI for certain that um, <laughs> that they're gonna um, jump up and down and say we need 500. <laughs> we need to send this to to every store in the country. Right. Well, and you know, I kept some books because um, oh, I know what else I want to share with people too. But I kept some books because we will keep traveling and you know we'll go to different. National parks, different campgrounds, different bookstores. Um, there's some great bookstores along Highway 395, um, Eastern Sierras that we go to, and I want to definitely bring them some um, when we start camping again. It's winter right now, so it's hard. We, you know, we will probably take a trip to Death Valley in a, in the next month or so. So I'll we'll be going down there, and I will definitely bring the book with me. So, all right. But one other thing I was going to mention that I forgot was um, when I got the book printed from TPS Printing, mm -hmm. they, send you, they sent me a proof first to proof it before they actually printed the first 500. And when the proof came, it's not bound. So here was 224 pages unbound, all color. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, how, I want to show this to people. I want to, but so I immediately went to the, uh, a print shop and had it spiral bound so mm -hmm. they can do that and that that was you know that was I don't know five dollars or something it cost it was very inexpensive but and because when I first um, oh this is all, another thing spiral brown cookbook so a right. lot of go back to that yeah. well I thought I wanted to make it a spiral bound cookbook that was my idea was oh I right. want it to be spiral bound so it'll stay open at the in the camp you know in the camper 
But um, all these different people, my writing coach and other authors said, don't spiral bound. It's going to look like a church potluck cookbook. Mm -hmm. And the bookstores will not put it on bookshelf. They'll only have it on a table. And after it's not a new book anymore, it'll get lost in the back table. It yeah. won't be up front anymore. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the, the book that um, it is called Perfect Bound is what it's called, but it does lie flat pretty well. So it's, um, you know, once you open it, you can kind of right. press it down. And, and, and it, it, doesn't it doesn't break the binding. You know, I noticed <laughs> on, on, on my copies, I appreciated that a lot. But, you know, I, I understand what they're saying about spiral bound and what happens. And I just think it's a shame because <laughs> you want to be able to open a cookbook flat it's one of the hardest things you know I mean I'm lucky because I don't really ever follow recipes directly I read them I and then look at what I've got and say what I do I want to do with it right uh -huh. but yep. still you know there are times and like I need to know exactly what I'm gonna do next on something more complicated and new and and so too bad maybe I'll come around and see the light on that one at some point yeah, I, but I notice if you go into a bookstore now, just look. There's no spiral bound books uh, up on the shelves, mm -hmm. and uh, right. in our local in our local bookstore, my book. Well, at first it was on the table in the front, in the very front of the store for a long time, and then they put it up on the shelf. But they put mine, you know, facing forward. Mm -hmm. and so that was that was wonderful. <laughs> you know, you walk in and then there it was. So question here of of why not to punt, to publish on Kindle now? Given where you are and your whole process here, why not publish Kindle? Yeah, and I, I probably will. Um, that's um, because I don't use Kindle myself. I don't read it on Kindle, but right. uh, I do understand too how a lot of people uh, take their Kindle with them and that's all they have and that's right. easy. And they have right. a little iPad and they just set that up. And so I think that's, probably my next step um and you're that, coming that, out of your easy. comfort zone katie <laughs> yeah, i know but, but that's easy no i know that's pretty easy on on kindle i uh, it'll probably be at another fee you know another fifty dollars or whatever it is to set that up but mm -hmm. um yeah i think that's good i uh and then a book on audio i, I mean do you really listen to a cookbook on audio um it's more know. than a cookbook look at all your stories yeah, but Sutra, uh, things that you're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I I guess I, I but then I don't know about audio. Would I be reading it or do they It's up to I think that's up to you. I I think oh, that you can be yeah. the voice. Yeah. Well, you know, another thing Paula I could say, I mean there's this part of me I I I'm I'm 67 years old. I retired in March. I just retired in March, um, and I, I really love having my nutrition practice and teaching yoga, but my husband's retired, he's wanting to go on more trips, and we're, he's planning all these neat things, and we've got a grandchild now, and our son's getting married this summer, another, we have two sons, and um, I don't know, it just felt, I, and I wasn't making that much money with my nutrition business, it was really a love, a, a, a love of the practice so that I, I just love helping people. And um, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of ready for the next project. There's a part of me that feels really complete with this, with this book. I did it. I, it had to come out. It was just a, a, a part of my life, a phase in my life that just needed to just be presented to the world. But um, again, if I do hear from REI or I get, uh, you know, a good, a good nibble, a good bite, I will definitely print more and, and go for it and mm -hmm. do more marketing and promotion. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at, at this stage, I, I really feel like, you know, I, I, I could move on to something else. Um, if I, I'm not going to like keep beating it, you know, if, if right. it's not, not getting uh, a return. So, um, I, and that's a good feeling. I, 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 I more than broke even. I made some money on this book, mm -hmm. and that's very unusual. It's an accomplishment. That. It is very much. Yeah. I think that you made some very, you know, some very good choices along the way. You know, you talked about you know, one of the questions here is the the drawings are yours, but are the photos um, Wild oh, Bill? Okay. Yes. No. So the photos are Bill and me, and uh, one of my daughter-in-laws. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 
is a photographer and then when she went camping with us she took a bunch of pictures and but basically there no she, bill and and uh, my daughter-in-law have real professional cameras a lot of them are our uh, cell phone um, iPhone pictures um, and I, I think the quality came out okay I do it's a camping cookbook I you know sometimes if you have these really beautifully set up pictures I, I wanted it to look like we're camping we're just yeah, um, yeah we're, we're 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 out in the, the, the wild and this is what we're doing and mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I think that came across I do I do. I, uh, it is indeed a very unique book. It's very personal. It's, it, it, it's a creative expression, um, both in word and, and, and art and, and the craft of, of um, healing arts spread all the way through it and every single piece of it in such gentle ways. You know, you can read some things and it's very pushy and you should do this and you should do that. This book is entirely invitational to chill out, <laughs> eat well, yeah. and have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm just looking through here, you know, I got, I, I, I put in steel cut oatmeal, you know, and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't eat grains, but people mm -hmm. that do, I say, hey, you just soak them. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just kind of gently bring that in and just say, yeah, this is how you have to do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, because I kind of go, oh, you probably don't eat oatmeal and you probably don't do this and I say well if I do I'm, I'm really particular another thing I, I wrote a couple of times in the book especially under um, the first aid um, was in the vignette I was just saying how uh, yeah, I've always been into a natural medicine and preventative but you know I don't have I don't have a problem with um, uh, the medical model but um, I I really try to do the natural way, but when my resilience is low, boy, do I tighten up everything. I, I really, you know, I sleep better. I, I try to go to bed earlier. I really zip it up. It's no sugar, no alcohol, no anything. So um, I really eat very healthy. So mm -hmm. just listening to my own body of when right. I and I'm a little bit vulnerable. Exactly. Then it's a really good point in general. You know, listen to your own body, and the quieter we can become, the more we gift attention to ourselves. The more we hear, and the more we learn and follow the directions. So, I love that we gift attention to ourselves. That's great. <laughs> you bet. So, yeah. question: Are you planning to come towards the East Coast? We'll be happy to meet you at a campground in South Carolina and prepare a good dinner. Good luck with everything. I love your book, and we'll give it another, give it to an other artist who is also RVing a lot. <laughs> oh, how cool! Um, you know, I am going to go to the um, to the East Coast. Um, you know, you should write me, or um, yeah, do they have my email? Well, they have, their, they have their website, right? Okay, yeah, you can contact me on my website. Yeah, there's a way to contact me. My, in fact, my email is on there. I'm on Facebook, uh, either just Katie Carter, or I have a Facebook, I mean, a business Katie Carter Wellness page on Facebook, too. So mm -hmm. that you can message me on Facebook. Yes, really, um, just the sweetest feedback here. You know, I love your story. Thank you so much for sharing. Your book is now in my Amazon cart. <laughs> oh, oh, and well, okay. With that said, if yeah. you do like the book, this is another really helpful way of marketing is to ask your friends, or I'm going to ask you, um, whoever just said that, to if you do like it, then write a um, a testimony on Amazon and. Yeah. you know where they have the what is that is it's it a review you write you write a review yep yeah write write a review because uh, a few of my friends have done that already so i just really uh, really would appreciate that that'd be great it, it makes attention with a new book and a first author you know something new and you know i look at reviews mm -hmm. and you know i look at the positives and the and the, the 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 negatives of it too things that people say in terms of deciding and, you know, it's it's one of the, th you know, when you're self-publishing and you're doing everything the way you are yourself, to involve your friends and your family as much as possible. They, you know, you've demonstrated here how much they want to show their love and support you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Oh, I know. I know. it. It's, yeah. Because we do, as healing practitioners, we give. We give out so much. And, so much. you know, 
we write all those blogs for free. And if we don't sell, <laughs> you know, I noticed all the doctors that write their blogs always have supplements for sale, you know, and they're, yeah, they're monetizing themselves, right? Yeah. 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 But I hear I would just write the, write the blog and I'd give them recipes and, and then, you know, I, blogs would generate some business for me usually, you know, always, I should say they, it, sure. I always got a couple of clients from that, but, um, Anyway, so let's... There's a number of students in Hawthorne grads that are in the process of writing books or have or are writing their, sec their second one. So I think you've been very helpful here. Oh, good. Um, oh, you know, great. there's feedback here about what a great idea to exercise at when you stop. It's good to get out and breathe. It's good to get out for the legs and move around, you know, for all of that, for all of us, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. it's like we're at our rest stops, we're traveling, we're sitting in our chairs behind our computers <laughs> is get up and walk around, take a deep breath, move your legs, move your lungs. It's a good thing. Oh, I know. Well, I write that, you know, you've been driving for two and a half, three hours or whatever, when you finally stop to rest and mm -hmm. you're in a coma, you're in a driving coma. You know? It's true. It's, it's, and so it's, it's true. like it comes across yeah. like that. Yeah. Katie, Katie, I wish you every success with this, yeah. just the way you want it. May it continue to flow in an easy, delightfully paced way. And, um, you know, I hope to see you in this part, in this neck of the woods when you're, when you're driving around in your tiger. And if you ever decide to upgrade on that tiger, I got for, first dibs on it. Okay. Okay, okay Paula. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to have nourishing meals on camping I wheels and go have fun. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you again. Thank you, and and James, thank you, the the techie guy. Look, you know, you you've really absolutely. been absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All right, I've got a few comments here in closing. I want to remind you that we recorded this, and it'll be available on our website under archived webinars in a few days. There's also a survey to fill out after this webinar ends. It's going to pop up right away, and you know, it'll help me to have your feedback. It'll help Katie to have your feedback. So if there's any comments about this presentation or the webinar series that I do in general. I appreciate you taking the time and letting me know your thoughts. Our next webinar is an exciting one on January 21st when we host Dr. Amy Raup. She's a renowned women's health and wellness expert and she's going to be presenting on fertility and pregnancy. So if you have friends that are having issues with fertility or want to get pregnant or are pregnant, starting their families, things like that, this is a good one to tune into. And our next All About Alumni graduate interview is on February 6th at 12 noon. And I am going to feature our doc, uh, Sheila Dean. She's a graduate from our doctoral program, and she's gonna be sharing about her postgraduate activities and accomplishments and her challenges as well. And I just have to say, we've had so many previous very, very terrific interview presentations. So I hope you'll check those out in our archives too. And I want to thank you again, Katie. This has been really a pleasure to have you be the lead off on the 2020 webinar series. I want to thank everybody for sharing this educational experience together. I want to wish you all the best of health and, and I sure look forward to learning more together at Hawthorne's webinars and our All About Alumni series. And until then, I'm going to continue to tend to writing my several books that are sitting on <laughs> a dusty shelf, as well as happiness and compassion and kindness, because what we practice grows stronger and, and manifests into something wonderful. So I hope you'll join me in this too. And until then, I wish you all the best and take good care. Thank you again, Katie. You're welcome.